You are listening to African Father in America podcast by Simon Javanokelo live from Seattle, Washington, USA. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us for another incredible uh, conversation uh, here in the African Father in America podcast. Today I am really with uh, my brother Johnny No Good who is an entrepreneur but also really one of the founders of this show you know the original founders of this show and uh, Johnny go ahead and say hello to everyone who is watching on YouTube and everyone who is listening on Clubhouse as we begin the show peace peace how y'all doing this morning uh thank you brother Simon for inviting me on continuing this platform uh I'm a big fan of the work that you're doing so it's an honor and a pleasure to continue to see you doing what you're doing on this platform thank you thank you so much my brother uh, it's definitely, you know, a responsibility that also comes <laughs> with, you know, uh, the support that you and the rest of the village gave me is is the energy that continue fueling this uh, this consistency. So I deeply, deeply appreciate you, and it's really an honor uh, for you to be here with us. Um, so for those who are watching, we have another beautiful African proverb that is going to be the center of our conversation today. And this proverb is from Zambia. It says that when you show the moon to a child, it sees only your fingers. When you show the moon to a child, it sees only your fingers. Uh, so I'm just setting up a few things on Clubhouse because we are multi-streaming. We are on two platforms at the same time. Uh, and I just want you to give me one second here. Yeah, I'm just finishing one thing. And then I'm going to share three nuggets of wisdom that uh, uh, will, you know, will just set us, uh, you know, will, will put us in the right place mentally as we begin this conversation and also prepare you with, um, you know, with the, with, the, with the wisdom that can allow you to enjoy the rest of this show because there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, nuggets being shared by many of our brothers and sisters who are joining us today. I already see Steven and Cubs. I see patients already joining us uh, over there on Clubhouse. And uh, I see uh, Kian, Mr. Kian, also joining us over there on Clubhouse. Take a minute if you're on Clubhouse and share the link to the room, uh, post on Clubhouse and everywhere else that the show has begun. And uh, uh, we would love for you to contribute your voices. Stephen, just go ahead and say hello quickly and Cub say hello quickly before I share the uh, three nuggets of wisdom. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's another beautiful day. Let's all uh, invite friends to invite friends. Thank you, Simon. Excellent. Hey, Cubs, how are you doing? Say hello briefly. Yes, good morning. Uh, morning, everybody. I'm excited to be here today. Johnny, no good. I cannot wait to hear your story today. Thank you, uh, Simon, for this room. Morning, Stephen, uh, engineer and patience. Excellent. Yeah, so for those who are meeting Johnny, really, Johnny knows me quite well, especially the growth of this room. Sometime we used to be uh, just the two of us here, and sometime we would be five, six, sometime we would have 2,000 people here in this room that, uh, you know, you are all uh, enjoying today. So, really, it's an honor and privilege. Uh, but I want to share these three nuggets of wisdom first, you know. Uh, these are the w nuggets that are related to today's proverb. If you're just joining us, the proverb says, when you show the moon to the child, it sees only your fingers. And so the three nuggets of wisdom, the first one here says that um, it is important to consider the perspective of others. Just because something is obvious to us does not mean it is necessarily obvious to someone else. Uh, number two, always take time to explain things, you know, very clearly and thoroughly. Sometimes taking a few moments to break down complex concepts can make a huge difference in helping someone understand them. And then number three, don't get frustrated when people don't understand, when people don't immediately grasp something that we think should be easily understood. Patience and understanding are key for successful learning. Uh, you know, a few days ago, we, we had the full moon, uh, you know, 
I think everybody saw it, but I felt like I was seeing it very clearly while I was dropping off one of my daughters to school. And it was right above a church nearby and above the trees nearby. And I was literally pointing the top of the church and saying, you see that moon? You see that moon? It's so beautiful. But she could not see it. She saw the church. She saw the trees. But when she saw the moon, she was just so elated. And this proverb reminds me exactly of this moment just earlier this week. Um, but also, my brother Johnny, this proverb also reminds me of how many people didn't see the vision of this work that we were trying to do. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I want you to take a moment uh, and share with us your own perspective of this proverb uh, as we continue on with our conversation today. Yeah, uh, thank you, man. And as always, it's just a pleasure to sit in the room. I remember it used to be times where I would just want to sit in the audience and listen to other people's perspectives so that I can grow. And this is a perfect reminder of why, because that that interpretation about taking time to break things down or what's apparently obvious to us might not be obvious to others. So thank you for that. Um, when I hear this proverb, the first thing that came to my mind was a quote by James Baldwin. And I'm paraphrasing because I can't see it in front of me, but he said um, that children have never felt, children have, he said that children have never listened to what their elders say, but they have never felt to imitate them. Um, children have barely listened or have never listened to what their elders say, but they have never felt to imitate them. And if we think about it from the perspective of a child, children can listen to us, all the words we want to use, but what we do is infinitely more important. The behaviors we model is infinitely more important than what we say to our children. So, you know, a child might not see that moon and all they see is your finger. So we have to be very, do our due diligence and modeling the changes that we want to see. I love that. I love that. I love how you might think they're not listening to you, but what you do, they will imitate. You know, that is so true. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> especially as a teacher, you know, in the education field. Um, like last week, I just taught a class at um, a Metro Community College here. I teach at several colleges and I was teaching in the high schools. I'm no longer doing that at the moment. Um, but I taught a self-care and time management class uh, last Wednesday. And these are a whole bunch of students from different backgrounds than me, social different, uh, social economic factors than me. A lot of them are coming from rural areas and I'm coming from the area that I'm coming from. And as I'm giving the speaking and talking, I'm not necessarily knowing if the students are engaging with the information I'm providing, but 21 of the 23 students actually said that they really enjoyed the class. So they invited me to come back this Wednesday and teach again. So um, it's one of those things that sometimes the people that we don't think are paying attention are paying more attention than we give ourselves credit for. I love that. Thank you. Thank you, brother Joni. I just want to quickly let everyone who is joining us, I see that quite a few of you have joined us on YouTube. Thank you so much. And also on Clubhouse. Thank you so much. We are here for the African Father in America podcast. And we have a really special guest, uh, Johnny Nogood, uh, who is uh, an incredible brother, you know, an incredible educator. He's a very, very talented poet and also wordsmith, you know, he, he can rap, he can do so many things with words, you know, <laughs> but also he can teach, you know, and uh, one of your passions is also gardening, you know, uh, so I just deeply appreciate you for making the time, you know, um, but I want us to go back a little, you know, one of my favorite questions that I ask guests in the show is, Really, what is it that happened when you are between 8 to 16 that continues to inspire who you are today uh, in your leadership? So speak mm. to us, share with us a story. <laughs> wow, now that's a, a profound question. Um, who am I that was impacted by who I was from 8 to 16 years old? Wow. Yeah, like um, what, what, what event happened when you are 8 to 16 or... Uh, what is it that happened around that time? Who did you interact with that continues to uh, drive you today? You know, uh, an event that happened around that time that continues to drive who you are today, what you do in the community today. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I can't say that. I think if I think around that age, the most significant event that happened around that time was when I was seven years old. 
And so I know you said eight to 16, that kind of impacts us, but the most significant thing that I can think of is around age seven. And um, it was when I found out that we had to transition, um, that we as uh, finite beings have an, a finite amount of time uh, on this plane that we call earth. And I remember my grandfather had came to talk to me once I found out that we quote unquote had to die. Now there's several different aspects of understanding that energy is created, never destroyed. Um, death is just one um, medium in this world. And so, you know, with that being said, I was so devastated. And I remember my grandpa coming and talking to me about our mortality. And the thing that stood out to me is once I found out that we had to die at seven years old, I made a conscious choice that my death was going to mean something. Um, I remember writing my first rap. It was at seven years old. It was after I, um, after I had found out we was going to um, tra transition one day. And there was a song that came out. It was uh, Monday, Tuesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, even on Sunday. And so I took that song and I created my first rap. And I was seven years old and I said, Monday through Sunday, one day we gonna have to die, but don't cry. Just hold your head up and keep my memory alive. And at seven years old, I made the choice that do not mourn my transition hold your head up and continue the work, keep my memory alive, continue to do the things that I stood for, um, that's the best way of paying it for. So that's the most significant thing that I can think of from my early childhood that shaped who I am today. Uh, I live my life with intention. And you know, I think that it's very important that we live our life with a lot of intention, understanding that tomorrow isn't necessarily promised today. Wow, 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 I love that. I love that living our lives with intention is easier said than done you know it's easier <laughs> yeah because because sometimes we say that you know my intention is to not eat a lot today because the amount of food you eat actually impacts how you even feel you know if you're too full you can't even walk right you know mm -hmm. yes sir <laughs> but, but then you see rice and curry i'm talking about myself you know i'm not talking i'm not talking about anybody else <laughs> you see rice and curry especially indian curry you know you eat you eat and forget about your intention with, with you know good with <laughs> yeah exactly so so i think uh for me i'm talking about me you know uh i've learned over time to really truly live with intention and it's so 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 powerful that you bring this up because our guest yesterday passionately uh, talked to us about this, you know, uh, the value of living with intention. You know, she was working with a Fortune 10 company, making good money as an African immigrant, a uh, uh, French-speaking African immigrant. She was learning, uh, she was learning English while learning uh, the American culture, but she was already amongst the top top uh, directors of the company she was working with so she was having it good but she learned uh, to to overwork to overeat to not cook for herself and before she knew it she she was in the verge of um, committing suicide uh, she was overweight so she decided to quit corporate work and focus on uh, something called uh, 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 lifestyle medicine lifestyle mm. medicine and so mm. that's what she's focusing mm. on now and you know whoever is watching if you look at yesterday's episode you'd not believe uh, what you'll see you know celine celine amazing amazing lady anyhow uh you know i see that we've been joined by weyani we've been joined by brother earth and stella on the stage stella is part of the one vibe team and we've also been joined by Ned and uh, Jen. Thank you all so much. Remember to, uh, you know, share the link to the room, uh, ping your brothers and sisters uh, and your friends who you think need to be here in this moment to the room as well on Clubhouse uh, and also on YouTube. We are live streaming on YouTube. If you want to join us and you're on Clubhouse, the link is right at the top of the room. And uh, I want to thank you all for joining us. I see Steven there and M. Jewel. Thank you so much. Check out the, the description on this YouTube uh, video. There's a lot of resources there. Many people always ask me, how do you produce your podcast? 
we've added that information in the description what programs do you use we've added, we've added all that in the description for you to also learn and hopefully do your own thing and if you want help we can help you now my brother Johnny you do a lot of things much like me you know <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes sir yes sir <laughs> Yeah, yeah I'm, and try, I'm just trying to be like you when I get out. No, no, you you should just keep being like you because in many ways I want to be like you too, you know, because <laughs> yeah. for me I always look up to upright people, you know. Yes sir. Uh and a lot of the time you know people by who they introduce you to, by who they have around them, you know. And yes, um two people that you've introduced me to that are equally upright people, Leo Lewis I have a lot of admiration for him. I've not met him in person. And also Lea, you know, you introduced me to Lea and I met mm -hmm. her in person and we worked together for like three months and she was an excellent uh, contributor uh, to Madaraka Festival. Literally without her, we would have we would have had problems at Madaraka Festival, <laughs> you know. So, so imagine her moving to a new state and having that mm -hmm. kind of an impact, you know. If you ask anybody who was involved mm. with Madaraka Festival last year uh, about Leia, they would know. They would know her. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Leia is a Leia is a phenomenal individual. Leo is a phenomenal individual. Uh, I actually just wrote a list of individuals I'm thankful for uh, from 2022 who helped catapult me to where I'm at right now. And both of those individuals was definitely on that list. That list is about 35 names long. Um, Leia, man. Um, the reason why I got into gardening the way that I did, um, I always had an interest in gardening since 2015. Um, and when COVID happened, it kind of gave me the ability to go outside. Um, I had stepped away from social media. I stepped away from public life. And so 2020, when everybody came in, it gave me the opportunity to go out. And Leo Lewis was the first person who had kind of contacted me when all of the COVID stuff was happening in March 2020 about coming out to the garden. And I went out to the garden. I had an opportunity to play. And then that next year, I ended up meeting Leia. And this sister says some of the most profound stuff to me. She has said, you can't have a revolution on an empty stomach. And that shifted everything I was doing as far as with gardening. So definitely some phenomenal people, Brother Simon. Incredible. So now, you know, talking about all these wonderful people that uh, shaped mm -hmm. who you are last year, uh, you shape other people's lives with your work, you know, mm -hmm. your music. We listened to your entire album one time. We organized a clubhouse room where we just listened to each song and, and discussed it, you know. Um, and also, you know, your poetry, you know. Uh, I just want you to take time and talk to us currently. What is it that you're doing that you're most proud of? But also feel free to talk Ooh. about talk about where... where your, your journey, uh, you know, as a creator and an entrepreneur and uh, an artist, your journey, um, where where did it begin? Uh, where is it now? And where are you trying to take it? You know, what is it that makes you proud, that makes you see that vision of where you're trying to go? Mm, yeah, no, that's a, a very beautiful question. So I think kind of to kind of let people know where I'm at, I kind of got to let people know where I came from. Uh, my name is Johnny No Good. Uh, that's K N O G O O D. Um, when I was younger, I was always up to no good, and so my older brother called me Johnny No Good. I was a little bad dude, you know. When you you figure things out, you got extra time on your hands, so usually you do some tinkering, and tinkering don't necessarily work well in structured environments. Um, but in 2010, I was the victim of a home invasion. Um, there was an individual who had, I knew from seventh grade, who had used my connection with music to get in close and they used that as an attempt to home invade my house. Um, there was an individual who came in unmasked um, and in the street culture and hip hop culture, um, when somebody enters into your dwelling unmasked, they don't intend to leave no survivors. Um, my three-year-old niece was in the house at the time. And so dealing with the fallout of being shot and there's another aspect of trauma, which is not just being the victim of violence, but being the inflictor of violence. There's a trauma that came with that because I almost took this individual's life. He had a 10% chance of living. And that kind of snowballed or started a series of events that would almost sound made up. Um, I was going to 
Metro Community College because, and it's, it's interesting, the same college I'm teaching at is the college that I was going to to, to be a student. And um, I had looked, I was supposed to have been going to a human relations class. And I looked, I went into the building and I went to the wrong room number. And there was a paper that said that the class had got moved upstairs that day. And so I went upstairs, I sat in the class and it was a principles of marketing class or principles of management class. And this was like a, a level three class. So you would have had to do some prerequisites and all of this stuff to be able to be in this class. So I ended up talking to the instructor and I really enjoyed myself. And I told him, I said, I'll be back in your class on Monday. That was Wednesday. Um, that Friday, uh, I was the victim of a home invasion. My uncle was always a very spiritual person. And when I talked to, when I was thinking about what impacted me eight to 16, I thought about conversations I used to have with my uncle at 12. He's always been a very spiritual and religious man. And my uncle came through and he told me he wasn't feeling the vibes of what we were doing. Um, like I said, I was moving in a different environment um, and I was just in a different mindset at that time. And he told me he don't like what I have going on. And I had a gun on my side. I said, Unc, let somebody run in here. I'm thugging. I'm going to lay them down. Um, and literally the next morning, I awoken to getting woke out of my sleep to somebody invading my home in which I had to end up protecting my life. And in the course of that, that Monday, I ended up back in the class um, that I said that I was going to join. The reason why I wanted to join this class was because there was a very beautiful lady in there and I've always been kind of shy. And so I'm sitting there looking at this sister. She fine. She fine. She fine. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a be back in there. I'm going to look. I ain't going to say nothing. And on Monday, um, I had went to class and I seen somebody that I knew from my childhood. I had spoke to this individual like, hey, man, I see you, bro. And he was actually friends with the person that I shot. And so. He started wilding up, he started making calls, and I had all of these people surrounding outside of my classroom. Um, with The person who I shot um, was somebody who was documented and known for doing murders. Um, when they did the ballistics off the side of the bullet, they had matched three bodies to that. The individual I actually recognized from the news from a double murder, a homicide, and so they had put all my information out on the news, a map of how to get to the house, my mom's name, all of this different personal information that really don't protect people that are the victims of crimes. So I'm living in fear. I'm walking around with a gun on me at school and in the midst of this class of once this individual rouse up, the sister who I've been looking at is continuing to look at me all class. And after the class, she came up to me and she said, she's getting a message from God that I do music or I do poetry. When she look at me, she see prosperity. Those who come against me will fail because I walk in the name of God and I will be the one to lead millions of young people. And so full circle as to how I got into this work, that conversation was the snowball and the start of a series of changes. I didn't do poetry. So I didn't take it ironic that she said poetry first or music. Um, at this point in my life, I don't feel like I have to lead nobody. I can. Um, substitute the word lead with teach. And I feel like I'm here to teach millions of young people. And every single day I'm living my life with intentions and the purpose of making that real. My goodness, Johnny. Thank you. Thank you for for just opening your heart. Uh, and and I, I literally vividly traveled that entire journey with you, you know. And it's a, it's a tough journey, you know. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a tough journey. I have so many follow-up questions I want to ask. I wonder yes, if I sir. should ask two or three, but, uh, you know, I have two. Number one, okay. which is, I'll start with a funny one. Are you still connected with this beautiful lady that, uh, you know, helped you realize uh, how, how far you could go, you know? <laughs> yes, I am. And so, like, I think that one thing about divine intervention and the creator is he pops up and through individuals you never expect. And so this sister is a prophetess. Um, I trust everything she says to me. Um, I seen her back in September um, before I did my mental uh, wellness group, my black men's mental wellness group beyond the stigma. And she kind of gave me some words of encouragement and she gave me some more prophecy. And, you know, I seen her in 2021 around July 
she gave me some prophecy everything has come to pass man and um so i'm very very uh thankful to still be connected with this individual um just as she's like a guide man if i was to call she's gonna know exactly what i'm going through she's the, the the creator will speak to her she will illuminate situations that will come to pass and so i am still connected with this sister man i would love to interview her for sure so <laughs> if yeah. you can introduce me i would really appreciate it uh secondly yes, another follow-up question is healing you know healing how mm. did you heal uh mm. from this because i'm telling oh. you bro uh I've seen a lot of trauma in my life too. Uh yes. But uh you have seen the real trauma in your life, you know. How did yes, you sir. heal and uh are you still healing from it now? Yes, I think healing is a continuous journey. Um just personally, I think healing is a continuous journey. And how did I heal? It came by one <laughs> acknowledging the fact that some healing was needed and two not running away from the healing. Um I think a lot of times when we hear the process of a journey of healing um we think that that process is an easy journey. And so I'll use an example. Um when I first got shot it was more like a graze wound but the 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 diameter of the 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 wound real quick I'll show you guys um let me see let me see if I can So this is the wound right here. Right. Right. When right. I first was shot, the wound was this big. Wow. Wow. And so when you go through a process of healing, if you break a bone, anything like that, when the initial thing happens, there's actually some numbness that happens. Um so one of the first things is usually numbness especially if it's severe pain like there's different aspects there's different things but one of the things that usually happen is numbness happens either from severe pain or even from over medication after that numbness wears off that's when the reality of the pain of what you're dealing with starts to hit you and as the reality of the pain that you're dealing with starts to hit you then now you have to go through processes like physical therapy which is continuing to challenge you and continuing to make you work through your journey of healing. The reason why I bring all of this up is because healing is a journey that's not necessarily linear, but it's a journey that doesn't always feel good. There's going to be times and aspects about things that you haven't realized that you're not dealing with and it's not going to feel good to confront them things. And I think sometimes, you know, as we see people on a journey of healing and they're at a point of being happy and being peaceful they're at a certain place of refinement that they've been stirring through this fire so long the impurities are starting to come out and so the process of being in the fire starts to bear more fruit and i just think that for myself um it's been a 10 year journey I'm just now getting to the point where I can say I love myself. Um it's through having a different definition of what love is. I remember always saying on the African proverbs room, if it, if you wanted me to be quiet, let's talk about peace. <laughs> let's let's talk about love and let's talk about happiness. You know, and now I feel like I'm in a place to talk about those things and it's through what is what is your definition of love? And there's a framework by I can't remember I think his name is uh Spec but I know I put it up but there's a framework that says that love can be defined as the will to extend oneself for one's own or another self growth and development and I think that if we look at love from that aspect and not look at love from a romanticized ideology then I started realizing I extend myself for people's self growth and my own self growth every single day I love I am love I am worthy of love and I have been loved and that shifted everything. Everything started to heal after that. If you feel like you unlovable, if you feel like you undeserving, unworthy, you dealing with imposter syndrome, you dealing with all kind of doubts, um self-sabotage because you have been conditioned to believe that you just aren't deserving of the worthy things in life, that's a whole nother journey that you have to go on. So, thank you for asking that question, but it's on. Of course, Johnny, of course, man. Uh I just have so much uh, love and respect for you. Uh 
I can't I can't wait to hear what all our brothers and sisters who are also listening in have to say, you know. <laughs> yes sir. Yeah, uh and I I I feel like we need to have uh, a series uh, of conversations with you uh, around healing, you know, and around um really around uh, how to be consistent with healing because it doesn't happen mm. uh it doesn't happen overnight you know when you showed yes, us that wound and how big it was and now it's almost disappearing you know yes sir and it took years for that to happen you know and there are so many other stories in your entire life that are connected to that healing process you know yes, uh yes, sir. and i feel that you know um whatever happened during that moment where you had to defend yourself uh was to teach so many people so many lessons and i feel that uh we w- you know the best way for me uh to continue learning from that moment because i know i met you so that i could learn so much from you uh man we haven't even talked about how much you read you know these <laughs> all these books talk about t- talk about the value of always expanding your knowledge and the value of always reading and maybe tell us your three favorite books uh just quickly and then we we'll listen to everyone who is uh, joining us today yes sir so i had an elder who told me two very wise things he said that if you wanted to hide something of value from a black person to put it in a book and coming from the background i came from he told me that the most dangerous black man in america isn't one with a gun it's one with a book so just with that in my mind that's kind of some of the guiding uh tenants that kind of pushed me forward this past year i read 50 books um It's, I think it's important to constantly be expanding your knowledge base and when you admit what you don't know um you actually give yourself room to grow and actually learn those things so uh reading and constant growth and development is very important for me man how did you read 50 books i, I just need a, a tip of your reading habit <laughs> man so so i actually um a lot of the books i listen to on audiobook So as I'm riding around, um I do all kind of stuff, man, from door dashing to all kind of stuff, bro. Like literally, I'm always just trying to make some money, man. Um so whether I'm spending a bunch of time in the car, whether I'm on the way to go teach a class, whether I'm on the way to go do an open mic, whether I'm on the way to I'm always constantly listening. So one aspect is listening, but another aspect is having an environment that reflects your values. Um so every Sunday at the Malcolm X Memorial Foundation here in Omaha, Nebraska, um we get together a group of brothers and we read we have a uh we have what we call a, a reading circle it's not necessarily a, a study group or a book club because we're all reading different materials but we all get an environment where we're all sharpening each other and sharing what we're learning for that day um if you think i'm impressive i have a student who i just wrote a letter of recommendation for he actually wrote he actually read 250 books in 2021 Yeah we we need we need uh well I know I know whenever I read even if I read one book and finish it I feel like I know a lot I feel like I want to talk to people I want to share these stories I feel more empowered you know so yes, sir. imagine I read even 20 in a year you know th- that would be <laughs> so good for me it would be it would elevate the quality of this show you know massively uh and i've i've really been privileged i've mm. i've probably interviewed 15 authors last year who okay. each of them shipped me books like read this before mm. our show and because i have a lot going on i just pick some excerpts from the books and i i have my discussion around those but i feel like mm. this is one of the things i need to do more of so i just appreciate you for challenging me to do a little better there you know <laughs> yes sir do you want to talk just quickly before we start listening into everyone talk about black black men read your club your club on clubhouse yes sir so i created a club on clubhouse called yes black men read we are actually in the process of turning that into an organization uh i'm looking at doing it so if you guys know anybody who has like you know nonprofit organizational lawyer or a uh, nonprofit corporate uh a uh, formation lawyer please send them my way i have some questions i am looking at creating a 501c4 with a 501c3 charitable fund arm that would allow me to have the freedom of a 501c3 and the independence of a 501c4 with a uh, for profit component as well so if you know how to set that up if you can help me uh, navigate that definitely reach out 
Uh, but yes, Black Men Read is something that I wanted to start as a way of connecting uh, melanated uh, intellectuals on Clubhouse. Uh, there was a lot of different spaces I was seeing, but one space I wasn't seeing was people talking about reading books, education, and that such. Um, I have, uh, like I mentioned before, we have a program called Beyond the Stigma, and it's a black men's mental wellness group aimed at changing the stigma, uh, uh, the perception and stigma around mental wellness and what it looks like, um, and how are we constantly persevering. And so um, I'm looking at elevating that with uh, Yes Black Men Read. I'm working on a reading comprehension component. So I'm looking at phonemic and graphemic awareness. I'm looking at creating um, not only introduce, when I first started it, I only wanted to introduce people to literacy, but I actually want to help give them the tools to build their literacies and be better uh, better readers. I think that reading is very fundamental um, to what you know about yourself, what you think about yourself, and where you're able to go in this world. Thank you, Brother Johnny. I deeply appreciate it. <clears throat> now... You know, a lot of our brothers and sisters have been listening in on Clubhouse and also I've seen a few comments on uh, YouTube where, you know, M. Jewel is commenting. She was listening to your story at the beginning and saying that, you know, your experiences at seven years old were very heavy for a seven year old. And uh, Steven is also saying over there that uh, thank you, Johnny, for your wonderful works. And indeed, healing is a process. Um, but now I want you to just take some mental notes as we hear from our friends on Clubhouse uh, at the after we hear from them. I want you to reflect on some of their comments. And then uh, after that, I want you to also share with us uh, how we can stay connected with you, how we can support your work. Uh, and then once the show ends, I want you to stay uh, so that we can talk in private for a few minutes. Yes, um, sir. Yeah, man. I'm yeah, man. I'm going to grab my charger. I, I okay. didn't think that this was going to kill my battery like this. I'm going to grab my charger real fast. Okay, take your time. Take your time. Yes, sir. So while Johnny is grabbing his charger, we will go straight to you, Steven, who uh, is joining us uh, through Clubhouse. Just unmute yourself um, and say hello to everyone, Steve, uh, and also let us know what your thoughts are in regards to today's proverb. Our proverb to today is from Zambia, and it says that, when you show the moon to a child, it sees only your finger. And our guest today is Johnny Nogood, who is an incredible creator, entrepreneur, you know, educator. And we've learned a lot about him. Uh, and uh, now it's time for you all to reflect, share a comment on my conversation with Johnny, but also share your own thoughts on today's proverb. So we'll start with you, Stephen. Wow, thank you. Thank you again, Simon, for having me. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Steven, joining from uh, Kisumu, Kenya. I'm happy to be a part of this session today. And uh, Johnny, it's been wonderful hearing your story. Uh, and uh, I've also learned a lot about the, your journey of healing. Still looking forward to learn more from you, uh, since I'm also a part of many mental wellness groups and uh, a year story from people that have also undergone through similar challenges, uh, as well as myself. Mental challenge is a challenge we face every day. And uh, healing and uh, walking out of these challenges, uh, the best therapy is hearing somebody else's story. Uh, now, on today's uh, proverb, when you show the moon to a child, it see only your finger. Uh, I'll uh, derive my understanding from uh, uh, a class that I've been attending, early childhood development. And uh, from my class, uh, I've learned that children or kids learn a lot from observation. They'll not be quick to grasp what you've said, but uh, they'll be keen to observe what you do. Uh, the words will correlate with the, your actions. So uh, what these proverbs reminds me uh, about is that uh, kids will be keen to follow and imitate our actions and will be slow to listen to our words. 
So if our work actions speak louder than our words, then it dawns to us uh, what message we will be sending to these kids. Thank you for having me, Simon. That was my moment. Excellent. Thank you, Steve, uh, for uh, your time and for your contribution and also for all the work that you're doing to help me and our team with One Vibe in Kenya. Uh, hey, Cubs, how are you doing? Uh, share with us where you're joining us from and also your perspective on today's proverb as well as any comment on our special guest. Uh, thank you. Yes, I'm joining from Missouri, uh, the U.S. <clears throat> and... Um, just on the proverb, I liked when you talked about the three points. Um, and I, 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 I like the idea of don't get frustrated when, you know, people don't understand what you're saying right away. Sometimes it takes some time. Uh, and I think that's given me grace for some of the things I don't understand quickly. <laughs> uh, and I, I will eventually get there. So thank you for that share. Um, to the speaker, Johnny No Good, it looks like you're now Johnny Do Good. Um, I really uh, enjoyed your story and um, I especially enjoyed the part where you talked about how you uh, transformed and the healing process. Um, I, I want to just, I just want to ask you, do you remember the day and the time, like where the switch happened? I always like to understand where is it that the switch happened, where you are doing no good and you switched and you took that class and you listened to the prophet, you listened to your uncle, what inside switched and changed to the person you are now that you're actually teaching in the very college that you are a student and um, even leading rooms on mental health for men. Yeah, Johnny, feel free to ju just respond to that now so that, uh, you know, we can address that now. Oh, I, uh, you, you, you're muted. You're muted. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So while Johnny is unmuting himself, uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who is here with us, uh, you know, on, on YouTube. Uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and on Clubhouse, make sure you invite uh, our brothers and sisters who are not here with us in this moment. Uh, Johnny, there you are. Okay, carry on. Okay, can you, can you hear me now? Yes, uh, very well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what kind of switched um, the moment that I took that journey? Um, that day was September 10th, 2010. Um, so a wise man once told me that there's two days that you never forget. That's the day that you're born and the day that you find out why. So the day I was born was September 25th, 1991. And the day that I found out why I was born was September 10th, 2010. Um, so that was the shift. That moment was the shift. Um, when, I, when I went and that sister spoke those words to me and I saw my life, uh, transform like what was the catalyst of everything that literally shifted everything i was sitting in my room um and thank you brother simon for allowing me to respond to this i was sitting in my room and i was watching a commercial and there was a commercial for rfd rfid proof wallets and i did not know what a rfid chip was and i ended up researching what a rfid chip was and that literally was the rabbit hole that got me on the journey to understanding everything that I'm doing now. Uh, when I was actually a student at Metro, um, I had, a, so when I actually ended up taking the human relations class <laughs> in my third year, um, the human relations teacher actually, uh, she asked me what I wanted to do and I was taking a business management. Um, I was doing business management, but I never finished with my degree. I don't have no degrees. I'm self-taught. Um, and she was like, you will be an excellent teacher. And at that time, I'm like, teachers are broke. They don't make no money. They ain't getting no money. No teacher ain't doing nothing. And it's been kind of interesting to see the full circleness of my life and how I have now been in an environment where um, I teach uh, at Creighton University, which is a very prestigious uh, university here. I'm teaching a uh, the summer program, and I actually won the Teacher of the Year Award. Um, so it's like in it's in those moments. It's in realizing and accepting that what's possible is possible. And if you knew the complete journey of where you were going to go, you wouldn't believe it. If you would have told me in 2010, I'll be wearing turtlenecks and wearing a Russian czar hat and speaking on podcasts, having the podcast on camera, I wouldn't have believed you. So I think 
It's all in just belief in the journey and being open and receptive to the journey. Um, the things will be brought to you as you need them. You might not be qualified now, the creator will qualify you. You might not have the resources now, the creator will present the resources in front of you. It's up to you to be receptive of it. Wow, Joni, thank you, thank you. Cubs, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you very much for that. Um, I do have a friend who's a, a lawyer and she does some pro bono work. I will ask her because you had an ask about that for some, I think a not-for-profit you're trying to do. So I'll get your contacts from uh, Simon and see if we can move that forward. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Cubs. Uh, and now I want to go to Stella. Uh, Stella, uh, I just appreciate you so much for all the hard work that you do to make this show possible. Uh, share with us your own uh, interpretation of today's proverb and also feel free to comment on the conversation we are having with our special guest today. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Joni. Uh, I really like your story because I feel like it directly relates to this proverb. And uh, uh, I also relate it to some of the things I was being told when I was young. I remember my mom wanted me to become a doctor and I was still like in lower primary school and my dad wanted me to become a lawyer so uh, I think like there was this day that both of them were talking to me about it at the same time and <clears throat> I didn't understand what they were telling me so I told them that I don't want to go to the university and it shocked them because <laughs> uh, I I believe it, for me to achieve the dreams they had for me, then I had to go to the university. So when I told them that I don't want to go to the university, they were so shocked. And especially my dad, it really hurt him. And looking back, uh, looking at where I am now, I understand where they were coming from. And I also understand why it didn't make sense to me. And uh, I also, I'm also grateful for this proverb for like bringing, bringing that to me and uh, trying to show me that I just had a different perspective from theirs. Uh, and I think it simply means that uh, maybe I wanted to pursue something different, totally different from what they had dreamt of. So uh, I believe whoever came up with this proverb uh, in Zambia, maybe they had seen children struggling to live the dreams of their parents, or maybe they had seen children and their parents going through so many conflicts because maybe the parents didn't understand the children or the children didn't understand the parents. Otherwise, thank you and I'm um, done. Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Stella. Uh, I appreciate you. Let's hear from Brother Earth. Brother Earth, how are you? Uh, where are you joining us from? And what are your thoughts in regards to the proverb and also our conversation with Brother Joni? Peace and love, families, brother Earth. I'm coming out of the North Carolina territory. And, um, you know, greetings to everyone. And I'm going to start off with the uh, conversation uh, you and the brother uh, Joni was having, Junie was having, and something that stood out to me and I felt was very important was he said about um, redefining love or uh, coming up, you know, with a new understanding of love because so many people oftentimes uh, look at love as being uh, interchangeable or closely related to sex. You know what I mean? And that's a total uh, misunderstanding. But, you know, to, to have a, uh, you know, understand from a spiritual level what really love is, like he said, is to you know, want to see others do better, want to see others grow. You know, that that's very powerful that we all are able to uh, adopt that. 
And uh, as far as the, the proverb goes, when you show a child to the moon, a child it sees only your finger. Uh, it, it reminds me of something. I'm going to re, uh, read something out of uh, Moorish Holy Quran. It says, man needs a pattern for their lives. They love to follow and not lead. The man who stands upon the corner of the path and points the way but does not go is just a pointer, and a block of wood can do just the same. It says, the teacher treads the way. On every span of ground, he leaves his footprints clearly cut, which all can see and be assured that their master went that way. Men comprehend the inner life by what they see and do. And uh, oftentimes, I had a, growing up, my best friend and them, they, uh, father was a bad alcoholic, right? He used to come home drunk, falling out, this or that, that or this. Whenever he get to preaching them or talking to him, he would always say, do as I say and not as I do. Do as I say and not as I do. Well, you know, after a time came to pass alone, uh, after it was all said and done, uh, multiple of, of the children end up being alcoholics due to the uh, fact of doing what they saw their father do. And um, it's another old saying, people watch you more than they listen to you. And especially understanding that a parent is the child's first teacher. You are, they're like a sponge up under you. Everything that they, they see you doing is what they're taking in. So it is very important that you are, we are mindful of what we allow the children to see us do. And we must uh, always be an example uh, or set forth an example for the next generation to be better and uh, continue to grow and unfold like that. And I'll park my plane right there. Peace and love, family. Brother Earth. Wonderful. Thank you, Brother Art. Peace and love to you. And thank you for such incredible words of wisdom. Uh, we will go on to Kesiwa. Uh, my guest, Brother Johnny No Good, is no longer with us. I think he's dealing with some technical issues, but he will be back towards the end of our conversation. Kesiwa, it's wonderful to have you here. Share with us uh, your thoughts in regards to my conversation with Johnny and also on today's proverb. Oh, <clears throat> I think it's such a treat to hear Johnny's voice and to see you interview him on uh, the actual YouTube. I went and got a glimpse to make sure it was who I was thinking it was because, you know, my early days of Clubhouse on this platform was always hearing Johnny's interpretations. And so just to, <laughs> to actually see that, oh, wow, this is really uh johnny no good it was like wow okay cool um very very happy for his progress i'm very very happy for the community that he continues to serve in the midwest and internationally because you know by us all hearing what he's doing imagine the ripple effects that is having imagine the uh souls that it's inspiring to actually also go out there and um uh, make an impact in their way, you know, and that's precisely what, you know, I feel like this uh, proverb, uh, when you show the moon to a child, it sees only a finger. I mean, and so we get to guide, guide uh, a, a child to see so much more, right? Um, we get to ask the child the questions on, uh, tell me what else you see, you know? And in the same token, we learn from the child, you know, a lot. Um, but the, the point is that uh, <laughs> this space is very much like this problem as well, you know? Um, I wish I could see a whole lot more, but I just want to thank you, uh, Simon, for always reminding us um, of the various proverbs that you share, because it's truly uh, food to the soul. Uh, this is Kasua, and I'm done speaking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kasua. Yeah, you you know, c currently, currently, my my spirit is leading me to interview a lot of the people who have known this uh, show for the longest time, and you are one of them. So. Uh, you will see me in your DM very soon asking you to join the show, just like I did with Johnny, 
uh, and Celine yesterday has also been a consistent uh, you know participant in the show and I just really really have uh, a lot of love and appreciation for uh, this opportunity to interview people that know me well but also people that know this journey well you know we've been uh, working hard uh, there are a lot of conversations that we had behind the scene uh, that many of you uh, were there to help really put this show together brick by brick and so part of why I want to interview people that uh, understand how this thing came to be is uh, so that you can also keep me on check you know you can also have an opportunity to tell me some truths that I might be blind to because once you do something that is becoming successful a lot of the time you you have an ego you might not even know you know and for me my goal is for this to be a community space you know uh, anyway we have one more guest here that is going to speak and then Johnny you are going to wrap the show for us but I want to quickly give a quick shout out Chelsea I see you uh, I'm just so proud of you and I need to reconnect with you uh, Chelsea is uh, one of the beneficiaries of the work that One Vibe is doing. Uh, she's a young lady with so much uh, potential. Jay, I see you. I'll talk to you later today. And then Shomari and uh, of course Chris Christina and Ned and Sherry and Moya and Patience. I, I see you all. Uh, and also, of course, everybody who has contributed. Sam, who is speaking next, was quite uh, pivotal in helping us with Africa Day last year. He's joining us, I believe, from Khartoum. Sam, the microphone is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Simon. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, and Happy New Year to you, uh, Simon. Uh, please allow me to start by uh, thanking you for all of your uh, efforts, uh, continuous effort. I think we are uh, heading it towards uh, a couple of years now, if not more. So thank you for all of the wisdom and uh, attempting to show us uh, the childs of uh, Clubhouse. I mean, pointing us to the moon and to to higher uh, understanding that uh, we. I think, at least speaking about myself, I was genuinely able to uh, to connect and to uh, learn and to advance my knowledge uh, by. Uh, being present at, uh, at these rooms and at these spaces that you uh, generously were able to uh, to provide us over uh, the previous pre period. So for that, I would like to uh, thank you and I wish you uh, a very happy new year and hopefully 2023 will bring uh, all your uh, joy and happiness and uh, all the, your wishes uh, will come true. Uh, regards to everybody uh, on stage, I uh, honestly I just... Uh, I'm at work now, but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to uh, to say hi to uh, to all of you. Uh, but then I just wanted to share my experience attending this room and how it was. I was able to to uh, understand and to also learn and about uh, so many aspects of uh, how can we. I think the most important things about uh, this room that it shows us how uh, the civilization engages with. Uh, with its community, with, with its neighbors, and how does it uh, grow, and uh, where did it get its spiritual leading, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, I think this uh, proverb, it's uh, also very, uh, it, it, it indicates also to the relations that we have, uh, the dynamic of the family relation that we have uh, in, uh, in our community. Uh, I, I'm very pleased to, to be here. I'm sorry I haven't uh, prepared myself uh, prior to being on stage, but I just wanted to thank you and everybody here and also everybody who is uh, listening uh, right now. Uh, thank you very much and uh, have a great day or evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. For sure, you know, your voice really matters and uh, we want to hear more proverbs from Sudan too. So uh, you see Stella is right above you on the stage. If you have some some of your favorite Sudanese proverbs that you want us to feature in the program, please let Stella know. And uh, also talk to Stella. We would love to have you as a guest. We've never had someone joining us from Khartoum in Sudan on the show. And uh, for me, uh, we want to bring as many African voices from all over the continent, all, all the corners of the continent as possible. So uh, connect with Stella and uh, she will be able to help. Um, 
now brother Johnny I would love for you to now take the opportunity to just uh, reflect on what everybody shared with us today uh, but also after that I want you to let us know how we can stay connected with you uh, and also how we can support your work thank you yeah, no, thank you brother Simon and my apologies I had connected my phone to the charger on the computer and it still died on me so I had to go get the actual base um, so you know, I didn't uh, finish hearing what Brother Earth has shared, and I didn't uh, hear what the guest shared after him before Sam. Um, but, you know, for the guests I did hear, I definitely appreciate what y'all said. Um, Stephen had wrote down, or he said that the kids are quick to listen to our actions. They are slow to listen to our words. And that really stood out to me. So thank you for sharing that, Stephen. Um, it's just a reminder that we got we to gotta demonstrate the things that we want to see. Um, with Cubs, um, thank you. Um, you know, thank you for making that connection for me. Thank you for being engaged. Thank you for asking questions. Um, you know, um, just thank you. Uh, with Stella, it's the same thing. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for sticking by Brother Simon. Thank you for continuing to work. Um, it's people like yourself. It's people like Stephen. It's people like Lavender um, that continues to make the African Proverbs and the daily African Proverbs room what it is. So thank you all for what you all doing. Um, sometimes you might not see the immediate benefit but if it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't be able to come and feature on this show. So thank you, um, Brother Earth. My phone had died while you was in the middle of sharing. But thank you for being consistent. Thank you for continuing to bless this space. Um, you another brother who I admire their wisdom and you're sharing all the time in this room. Um, I look forward to connecting with you. Um, it's been a very long minute since I didn't see you in these spaces. So thank you. And Sam. Um, likewise, I have to agree with you that just being present in this room was one of the main things that shifted it opened up all kind of opportunities for me. Um, it was literally Brother Simon who took the chance and the opportunity to sit down with me, uh, detail how he started his podcast. And because of that, we have our own podcast now called Streets a and uh, So Brother Simon, just thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you for the platform you're providing that continues to elevate the wisdom of Africa, that continues to paint Africa in the light that it needs to be seen in. I know it's not all good over there, but it's definitely not the way that they try to painted in the world there's some great things happening and i think it's just on us to continue to be the the people who push it forward that change the narrative that shift the narrative that tell the story of mama africa's resurgence and ain't never went nowhere she ain't never gonna go nowhere and so i think it's just important to continue to highlight that wisdom so thank you um as far as myself um staying connected with me um you can find me on social media at johnny no good that's j-o-n-n-y-k-n-o-g-o-o-d I, I kind of like that Johnny do good. I kind of like that a little bit. We might have to might have to switch it up. But um, I'm more active on Instagram. I have a Facebook. I got Twitter. I got Clubhouse. I'm not active on those. Um, Instagram, I'm more active, but I'm still not as active. Um, one of the ways that y'all can support me, I am currently working on a documentary. Um, uh, Beyond the Stigma, we're looking at turning this into a documentary. We'll be shooting over the next year. Uh, my family does an international film festival in Chicago. Um, in August, I'll have the opportunity to host it. But by August of 2024, I want to be actually presenting this documentary. So I just met with the production crew on Tuesday. They gave me their budget. They're looking at 12K. Um, so that's what I got to come up with. I know of a couple of funding sources. I'm going to get on that. I know the Ford Foundation got a, a funding source. Um, but if y'all want to help me in any way possible, um, I don't have the mechanism set up. But if you are interested in donating and what we have going on, please get with me. I'm looking at following my journey and six other individuals journey as we document and go through this process of mental wellness and what that looks like over a year. Um, we be will begin filming. I'm hoping by March at the latest uh, we will be done filming by December with the hopes of having that done by June. Um, very realistic. We'll have it ready to go by August 2024. We're looking at shedding the light, changing the conversation around mental wellness. I know in African circles, mental wellness is a conversation that's not really had. Um, so I'm just looking at shifting the narrative of it. And just because you're dealing with a little bit of things don't mean that you're a broken person. I think that it's just time for us collectively to begin the movement of healing so that we can start this love revolution. And this will end me with my final point. You asked me what was three books that I would recommend for people. Um, you would have asked me a couple years ago, these three books would be different. 
But three books that I think that everybody should take out the time to look and check out in their life is The Four Agreements by Don Miguel uh, Ruiz Jr. Um, that is a very profound book. Um, I've been neglecting the first agreement, which is to be impeccable with your word. I done worked on not taking things personal. I done worked on doing my best and all of that. But the thing that I have to work on is being impeccable with my word. Sometimes it get discouraging, Brother Simon. Um, this work we're doing, when you're a visionary, it's very isolating. Um, and sometimes you don't get the support that you feel you deserve, but then that's easy for you to not highlight the, the support you're actually getting. Uh, the next book would be Art of Communicating by Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, he uh, actually passed away last year, I believe in May, but this was one of the uh, books, this and the four agreements was uh, required teaching materials for my first year of doing my self-expression class. And communicating is something that I feel like we all can do better. Uh, communication, they say, is a problem. I say comprehension is the problem. And the last book that I would recommend that literally shifted everything for me this year was All About Love by Bell Hooks. Um, that book right there just it highlighted everything. And one of the main things I highlighted and realized for me, aside from the definition of love, was that most people have a desire to be loved and not to be loving. So I'm working on being loving. I'm working on reciprocating what I want to receive. Um, that's a twofold part. So Four Agreements, The Art of Communicating, and All About Love is three books that I would definitely recommend as y'all enter this journey of self-discovery. Wow, Johnny, this this has really been an incredible conversation and we have to do it again, yes, uh, you know, not just again, but again and again, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah, man. Um, and uh, I just want to also come back to our audience members and uh, just thank you. Thank you for taking your time. There are so many places where you'd have been right now, but mm -hmm. uh, it's because you know the value of the work we are doing that you continue showing up. Sometimes we take a month off, you know, like in December, we were away uh, for a month. And, you know, sometime when you're a creator, you're working on platforms like this, people are afraid to take a break, you know. And for me and my team, we value taking time off because what we are doing will outlive us, you know. So if you take a break for a month so that you can work for 12 months, it's okay, you know. So uh, I just thank you all for staying with us, for sticking with us. Kesiwa is always retweeting our tweets. And uh, even when we are not doing stuff, she's always helping push the content. Jay is always reaching out and connecting us with people here in Seattle. So uh, I just thank you all and to all our viewers on YouTube. Thank you as well. You know, uh, I see so many more comments lately and so many, so much growth. Subscription is growing. So continue doing those things. Uh, you know, it, it goes a long way. So, Johnny, I'll, I'll keep you here for a moment. Uh, let me just end the show. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow for the last one of the week. Uh, you all take great care of yourselves. Peace and love. African Father in America. You are listening to African Father in America podcast by Simon Javanokello live from Seattle, Washington, USA.